Well, hello there and welcome to this little chit chat with me. Uh, welcome and please just feel free to grab a warm drink and sit and get cozy. Cozy up with a warm blanket like right now where I'm just cozily sitting in my favorite armchair that was by the way just found on the street yeah um, today I want to do a kind of yeah just just like the logical following episode of my previous episode that was on basically me reviewing 2020 what changed what happened in 2020 that kind of uh, shifted my life a little um, yeah some of the main most important events that happened for me in 2020 um, what did I change what uh, did I start doing and so on and today like I said it's kind of the logical order of things and so I wanted to give you some of my little tips things that I uh, find value in in my everyday life and especially in new starts new beginnings of each year things that I would highly recommend you doing so that you are well prepared to face all the challenges that the new year is bringing with itself so without further ado let's just start my first step for you to start freshly this new year would be to tidy up whether it's your life so kind of uh, virtually tidy up stuff so tidying up apps on your phone you know just letting go of things that do no longer serve you and sometimes it might be just some apps that have been just like sticking around on your phone for ages but they're not really bringing anything in your life they're just there and you're not using them you're not getting any value uh, of those apps so just go around your apps and do some tidy up there it could also be um, you know just tidying up making order in the way that you use apps in the way that you interact with those apps uh, if you feel like you're just spending hours but like uh, like how um, like meaningless hours and minutes on some kind of app just rethink that and rethink the way you use these apps so that you get the biggest benefit out of them so that they truly serve a purpose in your life that they help you create that they help you becoming a better version of yourself um, yeah so or just taking some some break but at the same time I feel like you know you've probably heard of the term digital detox and I just feel like those trends that have been created they are not they're not serving us like on the long term um, because it to me it's kind of like the diet thing of social media so you know people go on a diet and they stick to it for some time and either they just like break like they just stop in the middle of it or they go till the end of this diet but then they just go back to their old habits uh, of I don't know just just binging on stuff and not really listening to their body and not focusing on plant-based foods and such things um, so it's like why take a break for something that you know you're not doing right and then just go back to doing the stuff that you know is not doing yourself any good so instead of doing this why not just try and come up with your own system 
with your own way of using these things or your own way of eating that's sustainable on the long term so which means it's it's being efficient on the long term and you truly get a benefit out of it so it's the same way we go and you know use our apps so somehow just uh, maybe either limit the time that you're using your phone that's something that can be done on i know on iphones uh, there is a feature on the phone that allows you to do that um, that could be just deciding you know that you will use just up to three times instagram in one day like one time to check your dms one time to create a post and one time to create a story or something um, don't use those apps to consume uh, because as actually when when you consume these apps they're also consuming you back so when you go there just use them actively use them creatively in a way that's producing something and not in a way that's consuming something um i think yeah i guess that would be like all i could advise you regarding apps um tidying up could also be in your life with your relationships in 2020 i have let go of so many relationships of so many friendships uh of course it's not an easy thing to do and i'm not saying that like all these tips are wonderful and magical and they just bring you to be the perfect person and to have the perfect life i'm just saying that those things they help me move on they help me uh, to bring back balance in my life they help me to see clearer in my life and to to see more clearly what are my goals what what is it that i want to achieve and what kind of self what kind of version of me do i want to create and how is it the most sustainable way to do that on the long term um, so tidying up in your friendships is really beneficial 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 please comment let me know where do i put like the accent where is the tone in this word so that i pronounce it correctly um, so those tips are beneficial yeah i think it's beneficial um, to you um, on the long term and especially with relationships because just think about it that way and i think that's something i heard in the Srimati podcast Srimati is an amazing beautiful soul uh, also known by the name of Julie Payat she is Rituals Life you've probably heard uh, of the Ritual podcast and she is his wife and she's got an amazing uh, podcast called For the Life of Mine and yes I will make sure to link it in the show notes um, and I think she said something really beautiful and like I probably won't do it justice like I won't say it perfectly uh, as she said it but it was something in the lines of you've only got one life and it's not I mean the life in the physical body it's not forever and if you want to be the person that you want to be if you want to reach a certain uh, creation of yourself then you might as well just surround yourself with the things that you love with the people that you love people who lift you who bring you closer to that version of yourself that you want to become and because we have such limited time you know and we want to do the things that really match with who we are we want to do the things that represent who we are and so it just goes the same with relationships we want to be with people of course that are 
quite similar to us, but we also want to surround us with people who have different opinions so that we can grow. But we generally want to be with people who love us, uh, where we feel loved and lifted in our relationship to them and where we can also give them back this love. Uh, so it's a really supporting relationship that we are looking for. And so sometimes it, of course, it's not the easiest choice, but sometimes you have to just let go of some people because you realize at some point that your paths, your journeys just um, shift so dramatically that you, you are not giving each other the love and the support that you need to go further on that path anymore. And so you have to welcome other people, new people who are ready to give you that love and that support. And these people, they need the same. They need to have the people show up in their lives who will bring them the most beautiful learnings and teachings that they need uh, to have in order to move on on their path. So yeah. And finally, so we've got, we just covered uh, social media tidying up, relationship tidying up, but also the tidying up of your house, your home, the, um, the place where you live. So it's like the secondary place where you live after your body. So that's why you also have to kind of tidy up your body, you have to take care of your body um, and maybe just like sort all the thoughts and all the emotions. Uh, but also you have to take care of your home and make your home a place that's also nourishing you. Uh, so for example, if you have a deeply, um, like a deep interest for flowers and plants, surround yourself with those flowers and plants. Um, if you come to realize that you've just been gathering, uh, like accumulating stuff in your house and you're feeling like you're, you're feeling the pressure of those things accumulating on your shoulders and you're not feeling completely at ease. You're not feeling, feeling light. You're not able to see clearly. Uh, you felt kind of, um, you know, almost in a, in a kind of um, a blur, like it means it's time to let go of some physical stuff as well. So it's not only important to let go of relationships uh, that have been just stagnating, that, that are not bringing you any value anymore, but it's also good to sort out the things uh, the physical things that you have in your home that are not serving you anymore. They're not, they don't have any meaning for you anymore. Um, but I'm not saying that you have to get rid of everything in your home that doesn't have any purpose or any meaning, but you really should only have as many things as like, as it fulfills your heart. Like if there are things just sitting around in your house and they've been just hidden under um, like a kind of, um, th they've just been lying down in a stack of clothes in a cupboard or just like uh, accumulating dust and you know, it's when we buy these physical objects, we usually buy them with some, with some spark in our heart. Like we buy them and, and we are happy and we have this good feeling about them that uh, they're either helpful in our life and they're going to enable us to reach something, to, to do new things. And at some point, when this spark like just goes away, when this spark leaves your body, it's usually a, a sign that those objects, those material things 
uh, are not fulfilling their purpose anymore in your home. And so it might be that someone could actually have those wonderful feelings when they would buy this object from you. It could be that someone is truly needing that one object that has been just lying down in dust in, in one of your cupboards and someone is waiting for that thing to bring them a step further on their path and yeah so for that matter one book that truly inspired me is called The Magic of Tidying Up by uh, Marie Kondo and I will make uh, one of the next episodes I will make will be based uh, on my favorite books not really my favorite books but like books that have changed my life and this one is definitely one of them and I cannot emphasize enough how important tidying up is uh, not only it's it's the process so like you know that that uh, saying that goes um, like it's not the goal but the way that matters and so the process of tidying up I feel for my part as far as I'm concerned I just love tidying up when I get into it it's into it it's like really kind of meditative like I just I'm not in trance but I really feel like deeply in the flow just like a meditation and I go through it and I don't stop until I feel lighter I don't stop until I feel that something has been accomplished I've let go of emotions or blockages and I feel like just tidying up it's also linked to all the emotions all the things that has been that have been stuck inside of you and things that like you haven't been able to process when you do the tidying up it's like you're just moving stuff in yourself like you're moving those emotions and you're allow allowing them to just go and that's why tidying up sometimes can be just so magical um, yeah so that was this and also for the social media what I forgot to say don't hesitate to unfollow just like you know getting rid of apps that no longer bring any meaning in your life also unfollow if you go on someone's account and you have just a negative emotion coming up a negative feeling like you you're not happy to go on the account of that person or it, it just randomly pops up on your feed and suddenly you feel some kind of unease that's a sign that following this person is not bringing you any spark it's not serving you so just go ahead and click unfollow. Um, my second advice to freshly start the year is to make it a habit to have, like I like to call it, a me time at least one time in the week. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I do not shower every day because first it's waste it's a weight of resources and water is so precious and sacred um, also our bodies do not have the need to be washed every day there are many benefits to not washing away all the good stuff that's sitting on our bodies sometimes uh, on a daily basis um, there are things that our bodies need little bacteria and things that and and like kind of grease in the hair and maybe in different part of the body uh, that are there for a purpose and they're not meant to just be sterile and like always cleaned up and washed up um, so yeah like of course if you feel really dirty and smelly go ahead and take a shower or like if you want just wash yourself with um, uh, I don't know how it's called in English hand hand towel I don't know like this little thing that you use to rub yourself your body wash yourself with this you will spare lots of water uh, but when you do shower 
either every two days or every three days, uh, at least once in a week, make it a habit to make this a kind of ceremony, a, like a really sacred time for yourself where you just indulge in all your senses, where you are present, where you are like literally nurturing your body with loving, um, like a loving caress, 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 lovely, loving caress on your skin, lovingly, gently washing your body, appreciating the water that's pouring on your head and on your body, being like acknowledging the wonder that your body is, um, maybe appreciating the sexual energy that your body has because this is a really like potent energy and really creative energy. Most of the creative energy comes actually from the sexual energy because the sexual energy is there to mainly create life and it's an energy of connection with two souls. So it's just a wonderful creative energy. Take that time to really feel your body by massaging your body. Take some really not luxurious but like beautiful oils that you can relate to. For example, I love um, pomegranate oil. It smells amazing. I just feel like I'm bathing in it when I massage myself with it. Light some candles when you take that shower. Um, just to have like some really light lightning in, in the room. Lightning, yeah. Just like let it be a bit like, like a cozy light, not too bright. Um, listen to some divine music. Why not some uh, Srimati music? Srimati, the uh, ritual's uh, la uh, wife. She also is a, music a musician and she has some amazing songs um yeah and then just spend that time fully in yourself be there for yourself and just give yourself lots of love maybe say a couple of gentle affirmations in that moment whatever you fancy that's doing good to you um yeah so that mean that's me time once a week it does wonders i love doing this and i cannot emphasize enough how this is important um doo -doo -doo. yes another tip use your ideas like as soon as possible when they come to you when ideas enter your body um I think I read this, I think it was in a book by Elizabeth Gilbert. Yeah, it was, um, I can't, it was Big, Big Magic, that's the book. Oh, well, that's an amazing book. Big Magic, totally recommend. Um, she talks about ideas being like, like kind of little fairies and they just fly around and sometimes they just pick a host and they go in the host through your head and suddenly you've got that idea if you don't seize it now it might it it will not stay forever and it might just go away and pick another host so really um like just grasp that chance that opportunity seize the opportunity when it presents itself if the idea comes to you it's an honor, it's a privilege. And so grab a piece of paper, write your idea and just fulfill it. Just bring it to fruition. Um, that's something that I've realized like over time because there are so many beautiful ideas that I've had in my life. And within a couple of hours, maybe or days, they were gone. And that's just one chance that I lost to create something that had meaning, that could have changed people's lives. So just seed, uh, seize that opportunity. Another um, tip, so not only make time for yourself, 
not only with that me time generally make time for yourself but also for your loved ones spend time with them play with them just talk to them ask people how they are doing uh, it not only like it will be a great joy for people uh, to have a kind gesture from you but it will also give you so much love back um, especially in in the current times that we are living uh, there are many people who don't have the they either don't have any family or they're really lonely and they would wish for someone to be by their side to ask them how they're doing uh, to just enjoy a cup of tea with them a warm drink with them to sit and eat together and sometimes we're just so caught in social media and in our jobs and we forget how important this time with our loved ones is uh, if you have some friends that are open to it and uh, that are open to spirituality, uh, meditate with people. Uh, I know for some people it sounds weird to meditate with someone because they think like it's just a, a lonely thing like that you have to do by yourself. But it's totally worth it to also meditate with someone. Sometimes there's just some, some amazing energy that that just connects between the two of you uh, make some little ceremonies uh, just put a beautiful blanket on the floor light up some candles put some flower petals uh, some lovely scents in the room a gentle music and meditate with that person or just do eye gazing like look in the eyes of a person for one minute and see all the emotions that will rise um just read with someone even though you're not talking with that person just feeling the presence of someone while reading is also nourishing you and nourishing them so spending time with people highly important um another tip is to dance and sing whenever you have the chance that's an amazing way to just also kind of channel process emotions let go of those emotions when they are stagnating in your body just let they let them go through the movement through the movement of your voice the notes that are coming out of your voice of your mouth um, another important tip be active move your body uh, this could be with yoga do stretching get in any kind of physical activity that feels good for you that resonates with you if you identify to one special act activity like sport activity that means it's good for you do the things that you love in general but also regarding physical activities for my part it's like yoga i just really uh, can connect with yoga do some meditation learn to breathe again we so often forget to breathe we don't know anymore how to breathe correctly and breathing is highly important in our lives to take a step back to just witness be present in the moment and witness what's happening not like directly just dive into the panic and stress and anxiety of a situation first take a step back take some a cup of breath and that would do just so much good to you and other people around you. Um, another great tip that I cannot emphasize enough, um, get yourself a time planner, a planner. Yeah, I guess that's called a planner. Um, like a kind of, in French we say agenda, but that's not the term in English. Uh, yeah, a planner like something where you just plan for your week uh, either like a weekly planner or daily planner uh, whatever floats your boat but i cannot emphasize enough how important this is to have some organization in your everyday life uh, and to also really feel uh, a feeling of accomplishment when you go through your uh, planner and you know that 
you have achieved everything that you wanted to achieve in that particular day um, it just brings a feeling of satisfaction it's really beneficial in my everyday life um, and what I also especially recommend uh, is also to reuse your old, old planners and to do something new with them uh, for example the one I had in 2019 so I got rid of the, the uh, of some of the pages but I used them to, to stuff boxes or as um, just like to take notes on them or something um, and the rest I just um, I glued some like some like brown recycled paper that I had to make like the pages look really nice and then I made an album a photo album out of it and I put some amazing pictures of the year 2019 um, and I think beginning of beginning of 2020 wonderful events marking events that I experience with my boyfriend in that year and now we have that photo album that we can uh, just you know look at whenever we feel a bit nostalgic and we want to remember what happened in that year um, yeah I think that's just an amazing way to upcycle your old planners and when you get a new one please look up for first like a secondhand one sometimes people have bought one and they've just wrote like they've just written two notes or something but then somehow they weren't satisfied with this planner and then they just sell it and that's how i came across my uh, current planner which is from Mata books it's an amazing vegan eco-friendly brand and their planners are made of grass paper and it just gets this gentle lovely smell like kind of straw and I love it I'm so happy with it and yeah just a girl had written some like two notes two stuff in there but then she didn't like somehow how this planner was organized so she decided to buy, to buy another one and that's how I came across mine and I'm so happy with it so I hope those tips will maybe somehow help you to uh, freshly start this year uh, on the right footstep uh, if you get any value from this podcast please don't hesitate to review it don't hesitate to get in touch with me on instagram or on tiktok you can also follow me or on youtube i've got some videos as well and some recipe videos uh, just get in touch generally i would love hearing from you and what would be your tips to freshly start the year 2021 i thank you so much for uh, taking the time to sit here with me and to listen to my tips and i will see you in the next episode much love to you bye